My name is uh, Dennis, uh, Dennis van Halen. I'm working for a company called Hudley, uh, situated in, uh, in Oslo, Norway. I'm the head of support and customer relations. And the goal for me today is to talk about Udu, obviously, otherwise I wouldn't be here today. Um, but um, the goal for me is to go over a couple of points, which I think could be beneficial for you as as end user or for companies that are going to work with with end customers such as uh, such as myself uh, one of the first things uh, that um, i would like to cover during uh, my presentation is basically get to know you go to market strategy why is this important uh, because it will basically give you the direction in which way you need to go to the market as one obviously but how to work internally, how do you build up your company, how are you going to organize and structure the way you set up the different systems that you're going to use. So that's one of the points that I'm going to cover. The second one is obviously bigger is not always the best. Uh, there's a lot of names uh, out there, a lot of different systems. Um, don't, be, don't be surprised on what they can offer and what you're actually going to use. So that's a point that I will cover as well uh, later in my slides. And the last one is a link to the second one is don't be, ch don't be afraid to change your system. Don't be afraid to evaluate what you're actually using and just say stop. Okay, this is actually not for me. Move on to the next point. All right. Um, if there's any questions, please just interrupt me. Uh, we can do it more as an interactive type of uh, thing. If not, we'll do a QA session at the end. All right? Um, up, other way. First, I would like to begin with uh, who we are. Who is Hudley? Hudley is basically a company uh, that has began six, six years ago by two, um, two people coming from Tenberg, Cisco, big video industry uh, company. Um, they wanted to offer something to the market while keeping quality, but for a more interesting price for the end user. Um, fully Norwegian, so we have full stack company, embedded software, application software, uh, um, design, everything is done in-house. Uh, we do the shipping, uh, manufacturing to a certain extent, everything is done in Oslo and we ship globally. Um, why is this important? That means that there's a lot of people at stake. Um, when I began three years ago, I think I was employee number 17. We are about 80 today, 80 today, and we're still growing. Uh, it's, it's, it's a lot of interest around Hudley, and that brings a lot of challenges with it as well. Um, that's to say, um, try the video. Unfortunately, there's no sound, but I would, uh, what I wanted to show you is basically kind of what we, what we do. So this is our promotional video. It has a lot of information, uh, which could be interesting for you guys to know. Why do I show this? It's just to show the complexity of, of the actual uh, product itself. Um, we began small. Um, like I said, three years ago, we're like 15 people making cameras in the office, shipping them from the office. As of today, uh, we have 44.7 million Norwegian NOx in revenue on a yearly basis, and that was on Q2 2019. 
50% of, of, um, of profit margin uh, in, in Q2 2019. We're shipping by the thousands now, uh, globally, uh, with strategic partners. I'll come to that point later on. But it, it hasn't just come to that point overnight. Uh, there's a lot of things happening. Why is Hadley import or becoming an important player in the video conference um, market? Because we're agnostic. You can use it with any type of platform, any type of video conference tool that is out there. Plug and play type of uh, situation. Um, everything is done on the camera. It's USB powered. So you don't need additional cables. You don't need software to actually make it run. Take the camera, plug it in, you use it. And that's it. And on the camera, all the magic is happening. So the, the Movie DSX uh, chip that we use is actually enabled to do uh, machine learning, AI. You have an open application, API, uh, open API, that you can connect to the different environments where it does people counting, object recognition, and so on. So there's a lot of, lot of things happening around, uh, around the camera. So this is the camera. I brought one, so if you want to have a look afterwards, uh, please let me know. I'll be more than happy to show a bit more of, uh, of the product. Um, there's a lot of things. It's 1080p, 150 degree angle, as you saw. So if I put it here, it will basically recognize everything uh, or everyone in, in the room. Five microphone array, uh, up to six, seven meters, uh, clear speech, uh, voice recognition. Um, as I said before, uh, AI powered uh, software upgradable. So you buy a camera today, it won't be the same in six months. And what comes more? There's a lot of things to do. So um, interesting thing to, to show, uh, and I'm coming to the interesting part later on, those are some of our strategic partners. So those are partners that have our camera embedded into their bundle. Microsoft, Zoom. Crestron, bigger in the United States, Yamaha. Uh, there's a lot of traction on it and it's growing. Why is this important in, in this structure or in, in this presentation? Hopefully everyone beginning to build a company will go through this. In the beginning you'll have flat structure. People wear different hats. People will do different things based on what they are used to work with. So you have person number A will choose those type of systems. Person B will choose those systems. They will not correlate together. They will not work together because there's no direct need. Everyone will actually operate and it will kind of work to a certain extent. But then your product becomes known. You begin to ship more. Um, hopefully there's success. You go into a more silo structure. That means that there is a structure in place, management, specialization, um, more correlation between the different departments and there's a dependency on the different departments, departments as well. That means that you need to be able to work in a structure that works for everyone without spending time, money, integrating different systems, right? So that brings me to the, to the next slide. It is potentially one of the most important slides that that I will show you today. Here you definitely see the, the basically the past of how Hadley has worked, how they work today, and how they are going to work in the future. As you begin, as in the past, we have used a certain amount of, of modules uh, in, in Udu while using a lot of different other ones. Um, like I said, it works to a certain extent, but the more you involve, the more you become dependent on the different departments, on the people, on the service that they provide, and the market that you're going to work with, um, you will phase out different systems. So as you can see, we have had a lot of different external platforms. Um, yeah, I'm not going to enumerate them all, but it is, as you can see, it's clear. Um, we're uh, at the moment um, fitting out a lot of uh, external uh, services and in the future um, we'll go full stack on, on Udu because we see that there's, there's a need to do so. It is all integrated, it is automated, um, it's, it's linked together. You don't have to do much more 
external com or connections with the different systems, which allows you to basically concentrate yourself on the customers, on, on your product, and basically gain revenue, right? And that's what you are supposed to be doing as a company, is to, to be successful, yes. Yes. No. Um, one of the things that we have seen from the beginning since the strategy is that it has shifted completely. We thought that we were going, the only thing that we knew, we we're going to ship globally. And it's still the case today. However, we've seen that since that we've put the first um, product on the market, that the individual user case is actually not the one that we are, is not the one that is being used. We thought that it would, it would be. Um, so the e-commerce environment is only representing 1.5% of our revenue. So we're not doing anything. So we have a product on, on Amazon. It, we're thinking of changing it because just to administrate Amazon is a lot of, a lot of work. Uh, well, we could do it simply with, uh, with Udu. However, the way we work today is more B2B, two strategic um, channels, distribution channels, and that makes it much easier to dispatch. Sure. Yes, yes, yes. And the goal would be then to have a partner portal, to have <coughs> their services registered on those partner portals, have the certain amount of documentation, and they will be able to, uh, to buy basically the product through that, that system. And that's why we're going full stack. So there's, there's a lot of, lot of projects ahead. So it's a good, uh, it's a good thing for us. Um, so yes, by the end, um, Udu does offer us a lot of a lot of different solutions, which we have been really happy with so far. And over the last three years as well, we have seen a, a huge development on Udu sites, which makes it or made it much easier for us as well to basically begin onboarding much m more modules and uh, to provide uh, all that information into that system rather than using external systems. All right. So I touched a bit on this one, uh, why choosing Udu? Um, I believe I've heard it uh, in one of the sessions today. Uh, one thing is potentially, uh, again, a, a repetition, is you have everything in one system. Everything is related to each to together. Uh, so that's, that's, I think, the, the most important one. It's easy to use, um, accessible. Um, the people that, that work behind Udu are approachable, which is not always the case. I've worked with uh, many different services before, and I can assure you that uh, the people on Udu are, are much more serviable than other uh, systems that I've used. But one other point as well is, is just the cost, it is one eighth of, of the cost of any other systems. And it has to be mentioned, to be honest, um, because by the end, why pay for a service that costs you millions of thousands of cr well, Norwegian crowns or, or euros? if you only use 10% of it, right? Uh, here you have a system, you basically add what you need to add based on the usage, and you pay for what you use. Um, I think that's, it's a good system, and that's why Udu is, is, is literally one of the systems that is on top of the list for us, and we'll definitely continue working with them. Um, so I touched it, I come back to this one, I hope that I, covered those points. So why is the goal or know your goal to market uh, strategy uh, one of the interest or the most important points is it will define what you need to use. We thought that we we're going to do a lot of B2C, but we ended up doing 95% B2B B2 on strategics, on distribution channels. And that means that your, your way of using a certain system is completely different. Uh, and it's, it's just important. So before you go to, to your market, get to know your product and get to know who your actual market is and adapt your system accordingly and prepare your system accordingly. I think that's the, the biggest point uh, where we have struggled with over the last three years is the amount of systems. The time that you have spent to actually implement, develop, train, maintain, uh, and think of the future service that you're going to, to provide to your customers. But if you're blocked at some point, 
you're going to be stuck. So that takes me to the last point. Don't be afraid to change your service. If you see that you are paying for a service and you only use a certain amount of percent on it, think twice. Put it on the, on, on the table, pros, cons, and change automatically. OK? Um, and yeah, that's why big is not always better. Um, we've used Salesforce, social boards, a lot of different systems. Don't be, don't be blinded by what they off offer. They have very good salespeople. But once you begin using the service, um, once again, you might only use 10%. Okay? In Udo, it's much easier. You can add accordingly. I've heard it so many times in the sessions here. You add in regards of what you use, and you pay for it. Yes? Um, three years ago. So we began with the inventory, uh, the CRM. Um, I think it was eight. I'm not 100% sure. Yeah. And so what was the biggest challenge the past three years? Um, it, it's basically different people working uh, and getting, getting a real structure in place. Like I said, three years ago, we were 15, 15 20 people people doing different tasks, uh, which means as well that those different people had different opinions and they were their own kind of point to contact. <coughs> so they were, okay, let's do this, let's launch it. Uh, and I was one of them, I, I must admit. But now there's a structure in place. That means as well that before you're actually launching something, you, you check with your, your colleagues, does this actually really work? And that's why we phase out all the external services. As kind of as simple as that, um, because you, we see that there is there is a good point to actually stay within one environment, and Udu is is the one that works for us. Yeah, the, the CEO is telling us um, he at least keep the standard, man. Yeah. And can keep the standard? It, 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 it has improved because because you can relay on a system, you can develop on a system. And what Udu has actually provided us is they, they come with the new features along the road, which you might not be able to find in different systems. Because they're bigger, it's more difficult to get things actually through uh, as a feature request. Here, I, I believe that because they have those modules which are very specialized um, and they're so easy to actually handle, that you can take full advantage of those different modules rather than having a whole product only use 10%, trying to find if it has. Uh, and that makes it difficult to actually yeah, uh, go forward. So that's why different mod modules uh, and just the, the, the facility to add those different modules into your system. So what going challenge do you have? Is everything done now? Or no, no, we, no there's, there's always a challenge. Otherwise, it won't be fun, right? But uh, no. The biggest challenge, I think, is, is to shut down. That's why don't be afraid to change your system. Is to basically have those ideas clear, put them on the paper, talk with the guys in Udu, make sure that you get them implemented correctly, and, and take advantage of it. Uh, and then basically use that data in order to learn from it and, and work on the next step. Uh, and I guess it's for everyone that's working in, in, in who is working basically, is to, to improve, to, to, to get a customer satisfaction, to improve the quality. And you'll never be 100%. So that's, that's one. But yeah, I hope that answers kind of your question. Yes? Uh, what did you do? Because you worked with several of the systems before. Yes. Recuperating your old data, historical data. Did you? Did you do that, or did you just um, Did I migrate my data from point A to B? Yes, uh, till a certain extent. Um, depends on what data. If it becomes to financial data, obviously that's something that you need to migrate, right? Because you base yourself on something, you cannot just begin with a clean sheet and, and go with it. When it comes to customer data, leads, customers, etc. Most of the cases, it's, it's always the same fields. So I've never had too many issues migrating the data. Yes, it takes time. But if it's done in a correct way, if the old system uh, provider um, has the f different functionalities in order to extract the data, 
Um, so far, I have not, not had any issues with it. The biggest point I would say is in regards of ticket systems. When you have ticket systems, there's a lot of email notifications, internal comments, etc. Um, is that information important? Till a certain extent. Should I be able to find it back within two years? I believe so, because I have the obligation to do so. Do you actually do it? No, because how many times a, a case is closed? The case is closed, you shouldn't come back on it. But who knows, in two years, that customer might say, hey, I had case number XYZ. Um, yeah, okay, XYZ, if I can retrieve the data without having all the bling bling, I would say, I'm, I'm happy. So it depends on how much importance you have in the data that you want to export. For me, it's more important to have a, a, an important or um, a correct migration uh, or implementation than a migration. Any more questions? Yes? Uh, what do you use Jira for? And is it integrated with Odoo at all? Or they um, the integration will be done. Um, it's because our engineering team is using uh, Jira. Um, the engineers have their own way of doing. Um, before I'm able to move them over to Udo, it's another year or two. <laughs> because they're just used to it, as, as simple as that. Yes, uh, Jira will be integrated from our help desk environment to Jira and vice versa, uh, just for the facility of it. But it's, it's a full sync. So if data is changed in Udo, it will be changed in, in, uh, in Jira and vice versa. Um, it's just, just for the facility of it. So it's uh, the commercial side of the company and uh, the R&D side of the company. Right. Any more questions? It represents 70% of the company, and we're 80 today and still growing. 70%. Seven, uh, 70%. So it's, uh, it's a big team. But within the team, you have basically hardware design, design itself, software, etc. So it's um, so we are around 30 users today uh, on, uh, on the Udo. Yeah. Yes? Sure. You're, you're very well uh, in the past, now, and the future. Yes. And you, you, set up, you set up the inventory module and the sales. But, uh, why did you not decide to also install uh, purchasing straight away? Because purchasing is feeding the inventory. <laughs> Two different departments, uh, unfortunately. So we have, we have basically logistic departments. Uh, so we have upstream and downstream. Uh, two different people, uh, and at, as for now, they um, they didn't simply not onboard any uh, any any systems. That's all. That's it for now. Um, I'll be around, so just don't hesitate to uh, to come to me. I'll be more than happy to answer the, the remaining questions. Thank you.